I'm going to start off by casting the finals of the first division in my Discord tournament. While uh, yesterday we casted the second division, today we're going to cast the first division. So I think we're actually just going to go ahead and jump straight in. First game is Arabia, then this whole map, whole map, whole map, whole map. It's the best of five. And I've been told the set is also taking a while, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit here and there to try and squeeze this in before the A Olympics. So that's where... James, I'll try to sneak in some only ones after the A Olympics games. I slept quite long today. I woke up at noon, so I probably will stream past midnight today. That's the wrist. The wrist is fine. Um, so Delta is... I think he has like 2k as his peak. Actually, let me check the details exactly on these players. Um, Delta is from Germany. Toby is from Turkey. Delta is the highest rated. He, have, he has reached 2k, but currently he was at 1930. While Toby is currently 1820, but his maximum was high 1800s. So Delta is the favorite, but uh, we're going to have to see how it plays out. Their home maps and preparation comes into the... into into a um, play here, so we'll have to see. Let's gonna jump in as we start. Uh, I, assume, I assume Obito is Toby and Delta is Delta, which will make sense. So we have Mayans against Goth. I wonder if this is a uh, preparation pick where Delta knows that Toby likes to go for Mayans and therefore goes for Goth. Now it doesn't mean that Mayans should counter Goth, or Goth should count my minds, it's not really like that. Goth should still be a worse civilization, but if you get to the point where where um, you can spam house calls forever, then minds have a really hard time stopping that. Really good map for Delta, easy to wall. A little bit of a strange lumber camp in my opinion. Probably here would have been better, maybe there. But still, if he walls here, this should still be fine. He can easily wall there, and there, and there. And he has such a nice map. This is actually a fantastic map for Delta. Probably the best map you can kind of hope for as a goth. Four on wood so far, so it could be a drush, could be anything at this point. Uh, guys, this is just precaution, I'm not wearing this for pain or anything. It's just now since I'm not playing, I'll use it while casting. Four on wood for uh, Toby as well. It's going, both of them are going for very similar builds so far. Toby also has a really good map, can easily wall there. You can easily secure this with military buildings and finish the wall there and also on the right side here. So great maps for both players and that's what we kind of want to see. Subscribing on YouTube is 100% free, Sub-Zero. But you have the option to become a YouTube member as well, which is a similar thing to a subscription on Twitch. Ooh, running into the town center, but he is able to dodge it. Fortunately for Toby, he did manage, like the deer went back because of this. And wonder who's gonna win here actually. Is it the scout or is it the eagle? Should be the scout, no? Yeah, scout winning one HP left. So first blood goes for Delta. As he is now sending village for to build a barracks. At 19 pop. Could be both a drush and a man arms at this point. But it feels more like a drush because of the amount of wood villagers. See what Toby's up to here. Also a barracks. This seems more like my arms though. It's now moving villagers to gold. Could also be for a drush, but since the gather point is still there, feels like my arms. Oh, blue mills comments. I prefer to put it right next to it, but this is not a bad mill. Um, but I think, especially when you get to these two, right? This is a great mill for the first berries, but when you come to these two, the uh, distance will be further. It's very minor though. We're talking about very small percentages here in difference. Sergeant Jack Rum. Hey Viper. Hey. Thanks Ooh. for the great content. Have you and MBL ever thought about starring in a sitcom together? We have gotten multiple million dollar offers, but um, I just can't imagine ever working with MBL, so I have turned those down. Um, thank you very much for the 10 euro donation. Appreciate that, and glad you enjoy the content. So Men Arms is the case for Toby. Delta is going for Drush while finishing up the very easy wall. So again, just fantastic map for Delta, perfect scenario really. Might even just fast castle this and go straight for house calls even. Uh, Sergeant Jackrum, thanks again for the 10 euro donation. That would have been fun probably. Ooh, forward even. So men at arms forward with five villagers. Six villagers even? What? This is great for, for Toby here. Didn't lose a villager, great micro. Picked up all three militia without losing anything. So pretty much perfect setup so far. 
Uh, so it will be five villagers forward with men arms. Let's see how this plays out. Might be a good play, but at the same time, the map for Delta is just so good that I have a hard time seeing this doing too much. Great start though for Toby. Also still has very easy transition in terms of walling off his base to be safe against any counterattack. Ooh, we want him to tower inside, but Delta has already walled off, right? So the thing here, it looks like Toby def... Ooh, Delta is adding many more militia. I'm not really sure if that's a great idea. He might pick off a villager here, but that's a lot of food investment uh, into losing a lot of militia. He killed one villager, but now the militia are pretty much done. So I'm not sure about this. Toby obviously wanted to take a delta off of a goal, a stone, evident by the tower placement there. Delta is long distance mining stone as well. While not having clicked up to feud lage yet. Delta is definitely feeling the pressure here. This is great pressure from Toby. This is kind of what you want to do as well to a certain extent. When you're playing mines against Goth, the main thing is that you will have a worse economy as Goth. So the mines should use that early boost in terms of uh, economy and other strings to take an early lead. And that is kind of what Toby is trying to do now. Delta still hasn't clicked up to the, to the fuel age. When you're in Dark Age as well, buildings are very weak as well. So this pressure is becoming really, really powerful for Toby here. Another tower now and three men arms banging on the doors just as Delta clicks up now. Village account is six different though, so obviously Delta has a big lead there, but the pressure is definitely on. They also have three militia as well in the back, so they can be annoying too. But Toby's doing a good job here of walling off his uh, resources. I still think it would have been better off walling off further out to secure his base earlier, but when you're going forward, that's not really always on your mind. Actually breaking through here with one militia and one tower as well. I kind of like this move. Just putting pressure from multiple angles, which is really good. When you retire, you can be a pundit like Roy Kinger and Neville. Hope so. Cry Wolf Moon, thank you very much for the three months. Love your content. Please keep it up. I'll try my best. Thanks for supporting it. Now, Delta is doing a good job here walling. Just There's a hole there, actually, below this house. But Delta is doing a good job buying time. But like I said, there's a hole there. I'm not sure if he notices. So we'll see. An archery range as well. This is great. Fantastic from Toby. I'm not sure if Delta even noticed that he's through here. When the archer starts streaming in, I mean Delta is yet to hit feud late still. And Delta is going to be focused on making towers defensively. What? Is it not open? Oh, there's a tree there. There's actually a tree there. My bad. It's not open. So let's see. It should be an immediate tower here from Delta. Okay, opt for a more defensive tower. I think he could have com combated this area with a tower closer, but obviously it's up to him. One man arms as well, pulling him off of a stone. Fantastic pressure again from Toby. Really nice to see. So the level today should be slightly higher than we saw yesterday as well. The militia here got trapped. Nice walls from Toby. All the militia going down. Very, very nice again from Toby. Toby has been playing fantastic so far. An archery range from uh, Delta now. Goes to another tower there. Delta is now 100% off stone, guys. Delta's plan was to go for Huskarls. The Mayans player, Mayans player have done that perfectly. He has done such a good job at applying pressure, taking control over the required areas from Delta. And as we have Delta, this could actually be good for Delta. The tower is up, though. But if he gets this tower up, he should be able to beat this tower, which in return would mean that he uh, has control of stone again. But still, pressure is just... So, there's just so much pressure. Now, let's see if there's a bug here. So, normally now, this tower should automatically shoot these villagers. But guess what? This tower just keeps shooting the freaking house. Okay, now he noticed. I have, I've had that confirmed from the devs that it's a bug and they're looking to fix it within the next patches. Uh, another villager down from Delta. Village count is now in favor of Toby. Again, the men at arms against the skirms. Great micro. There's no fletching either for Delta. So these, again, great trades from Toby. Even this tower here is putting pressure on the wood line. So Delta doesn't have wood either now. This is just looking so rough. And it's such great pressure from Toby. It's like, oh, he's doing a barracks now to mix in eagles. Another great move. Delta will have to make skirms in order to counter archers. So 
Toby adds eagles forward to uh, already making another eagle as well. Adds eagles forward to apply pressure. And look! He's building a tower in the range of the other tower. And guess what? This tower is shooting the house. Now, look, he has to target fire there. It's super frustrating. This tower should have never gone up. But now, he's actually misclicking as well. He's shooting the tower instead of the villagers. So it looks like the tower goes up for Toby. Great again. And Delta calls the GG. Quick and efficient. No alarm notification for the top. Yeah, so he didn't notice that he came in on the top. Um, click. Very quick and powerful display of honestly from Toby. He actually showed a really good way of how you should play uh, Mayans against Goth. Which is just aggressive, try to use the early boost you have as Mayans versus the Goth. And yeah, obviously for Delta it was more about his fuel age time was very delayed. I think he started taking stone way too fast, maybe gold as well. Shouldn't probably invest more into farms. And obviously not noticing the top side here, it became quite painful. Besides that, he did a good job buying time. But uh, yeah, once Toby got in on top as well, it started looking real, real rough for him. But yeah, fantastic display so far from Toby, even sending two more forward villagers. Behind this, keeping control of his eco at home as well. Uh, fairly well balanced for what he was doing. So credit to Toby here, it was a, it was a great game. Jordan, Viper, is Jordan healthy again? When is he not healthy? What, what Was he not healthy? That leads us to the home map of... I hate that we automatically start on the game 5. Kind of gives spoilers. Can I do like this if I go there now? Still goes to game 5. I'm trying to not look though, so I won't get spoiled. So game 2, home map of Delta will be Serengeti, where we'll have Delta playing as Mongols and Toby playing as the Japanese. So, let's get into it. Again, I'm on, on a little bit of a timer here, so I will fast forward certain parts. Especially Dark Age, as we have Toby playing as the Japanese and Delta playing as the Mongols. Mongols should be favored heavily on this map because of the hunting bonus. As you can see, there's three ostriches and five zebra on top of one elephant. So the hunt bonus for Mongols is insane. Really nice map again for Delta here. Stone, gold, stone, gold wood, berries. Deer, everything kind of in a very safe, close uh, proximity of his uh, town center. So that's fantastic, fantastic map. Toby, on the other hand, back gold, back berries. If he was Malay, this would have been the wet dream of mine, at least. Dock, dock, fishing traps everywhere. <laughs> oh my god, the dream. Okay, not enough about me. Um, good map for Toby as well. Gold very close, stone in the back, woodlands in the back. Yeah, really good map for both players. So we're just gonna have to fast forward a bit until we get to see what they're kind of choosing to go for. Both of them are in deer at the moment, as you kind of should on this map because there is uh, so many deer in, in the nearby location. Both of them are on the way to feudal age. Toby is actually faster being Japanese. He's doing a 17 population uptime with Japanese. And it looks to me like he wants to go archers. The barracks on the way. I mean, you can probably do this with Japanese because the lumber camps are cheaper and mining camps are cheaper. But this is still going to be so thin stretched of an economy. I, I, I just got to say, I highly recommend you guys to not play these types of times. We saw it yesterday as well, where both players went up super early. It's... Um, when you go up this early, you sacrifice a lot of economy and... Unless your opponent is way worse than you, I would say that you're unlikely to get any damage in that will justify the amount you're sacrificing by doing this type of build. It's even men-at-arms. 17... 16 villager pop up with men-at-arms. This economy is gonna be so weak after this that, yeah... Especially against Mongols. You probably don't want to go for this fast up because if there's any save that should be able to react to early militia or men arms, it should be Mongols, right? So uh, I'm not too sure how I feel about this build from Toby. It's first of all really hard to pull off. Secondly, it's um, 
it stretches your economy thin. Like, it, it's gonna be such a hard economy to manage. Gonna have lack of eco upgrades for a long time. I mean, he did afford the men arms, so all in all, it seems okay. But still, there's not gonna be eco upgrades uh, coming in or anything, so. This dog. Or anything of that sort. So, what's this dog doing? One sec. Losing a scout there, potentially? Not really. So I just have to take a picture of the dog, it's, it's too cute. Okay, sorry. Okay, not focused there. So he's just hitting, again, look at this. So you invested into uh, Men at Arms super early. What is the dog doing? He's just laying on the side arm of the couch, right? Where you rest your arm on the couch. He's just laying there straight out. It's super cute. I might show you guys later or post on Discord or uh, Instagram or something. Um, so yeah, Mongols players going for scouts, which is a very typical opening with Mongols on this map. Obviously with the hunt bonus, you have a ton of food, so that's completely fine. It's doing archer range as well now. And there we have four scouts. Dealing with the men at arms without barely taking. Actually, the men at arms reacting quite late. So he might get one scout in return, but losing all the men at arms before the spearman comes. So perfect timing there from Delta. And uh, there is an archer ranged out for Toby now, so not the end of the world. But then again, look at the village account. He's behind the Vils, which is because he's had this early uptime and gone for such a. It's such, like it's just so hard to manage this uh, type of economy. He's two villages behind because of his opening. And his opening didn't accomplish much, right? Because, first of all, it did help that Delta has a really good map. But still, he's Mongols. He should be able to get the tools out that he needs to defend either way. Uh, Toby again, I'm trying to... Toby seems like a very aggressive player. Last game he went forward. This game he's now coming forward again with uh, early militia and early archers as well. Which is something that is also very risky because... If those scouts were behind, you could have probably cleaned up the whole army of Toby again. Toby as well securing his base quite nicely, so these four scouts are unlikely to do too much. They did pick up a scout though, so that is very good. Warm Sensations, thank you for the Prime by the way. Prento, thanks for the nine months. Our baby has finally arrived, what shall we call him, Vipey? Call him for the Lord Doubt, as I've called all my other hundreds of babies. <laughs> so again, to Delta has done a good job securing his base. Second archery range. I'm not a big fan of the positioning of this. Uh, we did talk about that yesterday as well. Um, it, it's also awkward to have ranges on two different places because... Say I have both these ranges selected and I want to put my gathering point there. These archers might go on the inside. These archers might come from the outside. So it's, it's very not... It's like... A, compared to chess, we always want your towers to be connected. Because it just give you, gives you a better, smooth control of the game. In this case, I would probably like my second range to be there, maybe. Uh, just to be closer to the area I want to defend. And not kind of out in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> right now, not too much going on. Delta is trying to go forward and putting aggression on as well. Toby again. Could I probably secure this base a little bit here? Maybe make a tower, maybe wall a bit further out. But still, he is safe. All in all, but he does leave the room here for Delta to come in and do damage, which Delta is definitely looking to do right now. Four archers, probably not enough to jump out yet. And he's doing a tower now, but this is... This might get really punished. He does jump out now, but it's against three skirms and three scouts on top of that one archer. So this trade should always go in favor of Delta, but it is buying him the time to get the tower up. So I think, all in all, it might have been the right decision. But, yeah, still not an amazing trade. Actually, he's getting a decent trade here, considering that the skirms got split off from the scouts. So he did pick off all the scouts with this, actually. So not the end of the world. His secondary army is coming back. And both of them are transitioning their economy. But look at the villager difference. He has a seven villager lead for Delta. So it's already looking fantastic for him. Being Mongols on this map as well, obviously, puts you in a good position just to begin with. Economies, comparing on the limit for Delta, using everything, while Toby is the one actually looking like he might be thinking about Castleage. Still sticking with one range, one barracks, one blacksmith and market. So he's definitely trying the more greedy approach now with a transition. 
while Delta is the one who is still producing. He has two skirms now, three skirms there, and then five archers in the middle. So he's trying to attack from multiple angles now. And Toby, doing the greedy approach, is also going aggressive with his army. Which is something that can get super easily punished, right? Maybe it feels safe now with a tower there, but then again, you have eco spread out on every other angle as well. So this is very, very greedy by Toby. And he might bite the bullet for his greed here. Five villages behind as Toby might have a wheelbarrow though. I haven't actually caught that, so let's try to figure that out. I can just find the villager. No, Toby doesn't have wheelbarrow either, so Delta is still far, far ahead in terms of villager count. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing what exactly Toby will do now. This still seems close, so Delta is completely fine. Transitioning away from danger. He could have set the military behind here. Behind the gold to pick up a villa too, but Toby also has army in the back to defend. So uh, Delta, sorry. So Delta is completely fine here. Lizardo one, thanks for the prime. Arthur Pastor, thank you for the prime as well. Good Michael there, but Delta picking off uh, one archer, picking off a villager. Second archer, he hasn't lost a single unit le yet left yet. There he lost his first archer, but he has picked up three archers and one villager in return. Another skirm goes down, and another one. Fantastic micro but Delta, and Delta is the one who's actually up to Castleage first. It's just that smoothness with with Mongols economy as oh, Toby sort of runs into the town center area again. This is just lining up to be a convincing victory for Delta here. I think Toby was trying a little bit too hard to be aggressive here, maybe at the opening, which in the end just ended up hurting his economy more. Well, Delta played the more safe, standard Mongols approach on the map and reacted well. Um, I, I would say from this and the first game, Toby seems like a player that likes to be aggressive. He went forward yet last game and also very aggressive here this game with maybe not the right tools or the civilization to be aggressive. There's always that question. Another army coming out, big army coming out from Delta. If he can combine these two armies, then... Uh, it's gonna be tough for Mr. Toby here. Toby is now on the way to Castleage as well, 50%, but there is uh, a timing there for Delta to even finish the game as soon as the upgrades kicks in. What was the opening play from Delta? Delta just went scouts, typical scouts opening, as you should with Mongols, I would say, on this map. And now Delta is hitting from both angles. 18 Pop Castle Saracen Market Abuseful Monks is the new meta. Thoughts on five best players from USA? Didn't think you'd retire and cast so quickly. <laughs> Enjoying the casting, Dort. Thank you, 69420, for the 21 euros. Appreciate that. Uh, that's very kind of you. Best five players from US. Uh, let, let's finish this game first, because I think we're about to hit the end here, and I'll address your question afterwards. Uh, Toby is now completely off of wood. He has no access to wood anywhere. He's idling at all the farms as well. So great, great positioning here by Delta to sit on the right and the left side with, with superior army, with superior tech. Great micro again here, picking up one unit. Even an army coming on at the front as well now. So Delta is playing this early cast edge to perfection so far. And as soon as he realizes that Toby is committing his army on the bottom side, he's moving the top side to become more active on the right side again. Toby is cleaning this up on the left side though, but still, once this army comes into play again, I have a really hard time seeing how Toby can come back here. But never say never. There is a seven village lead plus wheelbarrow, a university, two TCs for Delta. So Delta is transitioning very smoothly on to the next as well. I wonder if Delta sold 100 stone because he has a market and he's missing 100 stone. So he probably sold 100 stone and used that to buy food to go up faster. While Toby is stuck on one town center, he used the stone to build a tower, he cannot build extra town centers, and he's also struggling on military a lot as well. So Delta again just looking in prime position to take this. Once Ballistics comes in as well, he's going to have the micro potential to control and dictate the fights even further. This is just so fragile from Toby. What Delta is doing really good here is, once he's pulled the army down to the left, he's coming in with a new army on the top. He has done this multiple times now. And it's really, really good play. He has the perfect number here as well. You need eight crossbows to one shot. 
a villager. He has four here, so two shotting a villager is the way to go. And Toby has to call, has to, has to throw in the towel and make it a 1 1. Very clean play from Delta, just doing the right things. Delta, so far to me, seems like a standard player where he likes macro, micro, auto everything, you know? Just standard uh, play. Although he did go goth in the first game, so I shouldn't be too quick to make a judgment. Uh, while Toby seems to be a guy that really likes to force aggression so far. So we're going to have to see. Uh, great play by Delta. Um, I still think, I would say again, I don't recommend any of you to play the build Toby did here. 17 pop, man at arms play. Even on this map, you should not do it. 18 pop, even, no, 19 pop, eh, 20 pop would be like the minimum, I would suggest, in order to do, um, to do a man at arms opening. Exclamation mark, Discord will give you a link to my Discord, sir. Still sick though. Yeah, it was sick. Like, again, he did manage to get the man at arms, but again, he was two villagers behind after the opening. And against Mongols, I would say you shouldn't do it. But if there was another save than Mongols, maybe it could have had more of a chance. Uh, it's still super risky, high risk, high reward kind of play. So, uh, yeah. Let's jump back. Check the stats. KD in favor of Delta. Economy should be very much in favor of Delta, which it actually is. Nut times as well. Eight minute feudal age with men at arms. That's so sick. What should the equal distribution be from an arms 20 pop? Uh, it depends a little bit on how you want to transition out of it as well. There is no right uh, answer to that. Okay, let's uh, not get spoiled. Okay, nice. So next game will be Golden Swamp. We will have Byzantines against Vikings. Okay. Um, 18 pop castle sarrets and market abuse. Full monks is the new meta. If you say so. Um, thoughts on five best players from the US. Didn't think you'd retire and cast so quickly. Um, the retirement kind of came naturally for me here, just gotta say. Can you name five US players? <laughs> I know Spring. Daniel. T90. Slam doesn't count as US. He's Canadian. Metal? Okay, true. Twig is Argentinian. Leash, true, but they're deathmatch players. True, true. Yeah, true, true. Okay, I, I, I know of four US players that are sort of good. Sort of. Okay, three that are good, and then one that is there. So I would say first, probably Danny Boy. Second and third, probably Spring and Metal are fairly equal, I would say. Metal is probably better on mixed maps, while Spring might be better on just Arabia. Um, isn't Dobbs from Denmark? And the fourth would have to be Mr. T90. Does Scotty know? Scotty? Pulisic? Well, he's a football player. <laughs> But yeah, that would be. I don't honestly don't know more high level American players, sorry. Or US players. Okay, let's go into game three. It's uh, Byzantines and Vikings on Golden Swamp. I like that we don't see the similar, same sieves. I like that they're picking different sieves. That's always fun to watch. We had a really good game here yesterday watching uh, Brody against Roach. So, uh, Vikings against Byzantines. Vikings, if you get to Castellage and start. Getting longboats out in these areas, you have full control of the game. Obviously, there's a ton of gold in the middle, ton of buffaloes, and ton of resources as well in your base. A little bit open map here for Toby, but resources are towards the back, so still fairly simple to, to secure. Delta, very open base actually for this map. Resources quite exposed as well, and this gold is actually interfering a bit with the wood line, so a bit unfortunate map from Delta here, but. Uh, Still should be should be a uh, open and interesting game. Toby is playing as the Vikings. Delta is playing as the Byzantines. Byzantines obviously have faster firing fire ships, so that might be his main argument for going Byzantines here, combined with the faster imp potential. 
cheaper skirms, cheaper helps, etc. While uh, Vikings, obviously, again, if they get to longboats to control the middle, you're never getting the middle back. A little bit of a mishap there. The Rhino did stop, but still, no, not really big deal. You, using the fancy um, town center to shoot twice and then finish it off with villagers, which is faster and more efficient than just shooting it with villagers. So you want to dock in the middle as well. Normally people build their docks along their own shore, but he is opting for the dock on the middle, while Delta is going for the typical dock along his shore. I'm not sure what he scouted here to make him go for this decision. I would have understood it maybe if he put it there, so he could take both these fish. But I'm not sure exactly what it means there, as he is catching the dock villager of Delta. Oh, this is a disaster for Delta. Good micro so far here. Like he's hit, moving as soon as he hits the village and he will get... Oh, he didn't get the kill! One HP! Ay, 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 ay. okay. Toby did took some damage, but the villager survived, so Delta should be happy with that. But still, just slowing down the dock hurts a lot. There's already a fishing ship on the way for the Vikings player, while the Byzantine player hasn't even finished the dock, so... Uh, solid start here from Toby. Blaming. Doing whatever he can to win. You gotta respect that. Oh, Delta lost the scout to the town center as well. And he has two deaths. Did he lose? Oh, he lost the villager to the rhino. No, everything is going wrong for Delta. This is a tilter. This is a tilter. If something like this happens to you, your dock gets delayed, you lose your scout, and you lose a villager in the time frame of 20 seconds in the game. Ah, that's painful. That is painful. Now, uh, we obviously don't know the mental game of these people. Um, but uh, not the greatest Rhino Lure here from Toby. I'm sure he knows that as well. Again, these players are at a fairly high level. So uh, we're going to see less of these typical mistakes. And there's going to be less things for me to comment on. But still... Um, there's always something we can point out here and there. Toby is looking great now. I think he has a bit. Oh, we even trapped the fishing ship! No! <laughs> Man, Delta! Everything is going wrong for Delta. But that's just bad luck, right? He put the gathering point on the on the fish and it got trapped in the in the walls. Really unlucky. Um a lot of people would probably just be tilted here. But uh, let's hope Delta had it in him to make a good fight. So, Toby is going for the villager again. Toby has been playing super aggressive every single game so far. And now he's also doing a sneak villager. The reason you place the palisade wall is because the pathing of the villager will be smoother in general. If you want to go forward, take four villas, build a palisade or a house towards the front, and they will move better and as you expect them to. Looks like Delta wants to go for the water. Delta seems, again, to be more of a standard player, while Toby seems to be the guy who throws in a couple of curveballs. Two villagers on gold, one lumber camp, still taking food. So I'm not sure exactly what he's opting for here. The villager goes all the way to the back. So this could be potentially game deciding as the game goes on. Doing a barracks now. Obviously the Viking player cannot build fire ships. So water and fuel age, unless the Viking player commits heavily on galleys, should be very favorable for the Byzantine player, who has four fishing ships now to two. So economy wise. He's definitely caught up a little bit, although Toby will be up quite a bit faster. I'm not sure what's up with the scoreboard. Someone has edited this in the wrong way. Uh, Byzantines. And Toby is Vikings. There we go. Polska fan, man! <laughs> Oh good, I fixed. Oh, he lost a villager. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, he's trying to wall. So Delta wanted to wall. Toby did pick off a villager. So another moment for Delta where he probably will feel like, ah, shit. Everything is going wrong. Question is now, will he actually spot the archery range with the villager? Yes, he does. So now he knows what is happening. As he goes for three docks blindly. Three docks blindly to go for fire ships. Now, obviously, he lost his scout, so he has no intel to go on. I would still suggest that you never go three docks blindly. Maybe two, especially if you have fire ships, because uh, three dock fire ship production is really hard to uh, sustain either way. But now he knows about the range. He's reacting with the barracks, probably an archery range as well, very shortly, and probably some skirms in defense. Archer is already out though for Toby, so this will be an annoyance. 
Uh, Delta will have to react really fast here. That's as well, if he, since he committed on three docks, he's going to have less wood to react. You can see he's very panicky right now. Eight villagers on the range, and the range is pretty much eating the town center. Toby does... Oh, Toby is adding a stable, even. Very interesting. Toby, to me, feels like a soft Vivi right now. <laughs> stable to make some more scouts to counter what he expects to be skirms, which he's absolutely 100% right on. Economy is looking great as well, with the free wheelbarrow, moving to berries, doing a blacksmith. Looks Toby's playing this really, really well so far, I must say. Utilizing, utilizing the fact that, that the Delta did lose his scout as well. Toby is just doing a really, really good job here. Decision making wise, I think it's really cool to see such a good decision. Well, he still has his fishing ship alive even. So Delta doesn't even have that to really show for. The scouts, an extra scout out of the skirmisher down, two skirms down. Still keeping this two HP scout alive, so much value. He puts this archer now behind the wood line to be annoying, that would be even better. And Delta is just again under so much pressure. There it is, the archer behind the wood line. Even a tower, now that's a ballsy one. There's blacksmith coming coming up from, from Delta as well, as Toby already has fletching. Delta obviously don't have a blacksmith yet. Scouts are out, he's trying to pick up the spears with the archers, and using the scouts to help. This tower is way too ambitious though, in my opinion, because there's only one villager, and there are so many villas from Delta, so Delta will always have enough to react here. I really think Toby, uh, Toby sees this tower as well, he should just disengage and give up on this tower immediately, because this tower will not go up. There is a way for Toby to throw this heavily away right now, and that is sort of what he's doing here, he's sticking around too long, Committing too heavily in the tower with the units as well, so he's giving Delta the time and room to sort of stabilize. Still queuing up scouts, still queuing up archers, but he is focusing again on his economy at home, which he should. Uh, combat Wombat, I will, I will uh, probably bring this to YouTube as well, just like the previous series yesterday. Great positioning though by Toby again. Delta will have the skirm and the archer numbers out now. I, I don't agree with the archer switch so soon. Probably two or three more skirms. Toby is committing a tower behind this woodline, which actually could be really, really good. Delta does have this woodline access as well, but besides that, not too much. Let's see if uh, he sees it. He does see the tower. He is Byzantine, so he has Town Wars for free. So he sees this tower and he could react. This villager only has 9 HP, so it would be super easy for him to snipe it. I think Delta is doing a good job defending here. He is five villagers behind though. That's also counting fishing ship. Which are still alive for Toby. Aye, aye, aye. So the question here is... Nice micro again from Toby. Pulling the low HP scout away from the spear. Again, while using the archer to pick off the spearman. Villager is down to two HP though. So it looks like another failed tower from Toby. Good reaction here by Delta. He's finally looking like he's stabilizing a little bit. But again, his eco is obviously in a complete mess. You can see just the farming eco already from Toby. How good the farming setup is compared to Delta. And that's going to give Toby such a smoother transition out of it, out of this. So the transition now for for Toby. If he stops making scouts, he can transition to Castle Age very soon, which we see up already up there. So it's been great pressure from Toby. Really well executed. And at the same time, making sure his economy is on track at home. And he's now looking to go into Cast Edge as well. Where I assume he is planning to do a longboat switch. The fact that he has those fishing ship alive still is incredible. Those probably have collected 200, 300 food more than they should have. Going to use the market now, probably buy 100 gold, uh, food. And then we're going to click up immediately. Uh, keep in mind as well, as he goes up. Toby still has forward ranged, forward stable behind Delta's base. So even if he now loses the Fuel Age army, he's now on the way to Castle Age, and he can then make Castle Age tech, while T Delta has 62 food in his bank. Third range from Delta, so he's going to go really heavy on the army production here. Now what Delta should probably do right now is try to go for a counterattack on the land, which he is doing right now, so that is definitely the right call. I'm not sure if he identifies that Toby is on the way to Castle Age, but either way, the counterattack here is something that Toby is not ready for. Toby is completely open. He is taking some stones, so he could do a defensive tower. But still, three, three archers into your economy at this point is something you never want. As I think he's trying to get another sneak dock up. But the archers are just walking in. Nice. Whoa, nice quick gates here.
Okay, I was warned by this actually, to be fair. I forgot about that, but I was warned about this. So the game here is going out of sync because of the gates. There has been a change to the gates in the new patch, which is why you get out of sync on all recorded games. This was obviously played before the most recent patch. So <clears throat> it's very unfortunate. This looked to be a really good game. However, Toby looks like he's definitely in the driver's seat as Delta still only 400 food. So I think Toby is likely to win this game. Uh, I have a spoiler f message here where I can check who won. And the spoiler is that the winner of this game was Toby. So we're going to give Toby a 2-1 lead. I think Toby just transitioned to Castle Age and sort of kept equal lead, started pushing pressure, putting pressure here with Knight's crossbow. And I think that's sort of how the game ended. Probably also got longboats out on the map, so... Hard, hard time seeing how Delta would come back from this. For all we know, this game was a three-hour game, match, a maze balls game, but unfortunately, not able to finish it because of the patch. Uh, Longboats boom into Berserk Onger. Toby Aoi, are you the Toby that played this tournament? Is is you be this Toby? If you is this Toby, yes. Okay, well then we got it. So then the explanation here is that he went for longboats, boom, into Berserk's Onger, and that's how this game ended. So good job to Toby. It was really great pressure though from the from the early game. Close my eyes, I don't want to get spoiled. <clears throat> so game four, as we have a 2-1 lead for Mr. Toby. Listen, Toby was the overdog overdog overdog. Toby was the underdog entering this series. Delta is the guy who has the highest rating and highest achieved rating as well. So Delta entered this series being the favorite. Uh, so this would be the second home map of Delta, which would be Ghost Lake. Uh, in this game, we have Khmer Britons. Good job, uh, Polska. On point, eh? Remember they've been build gates, the game stops. I think so, because the gates have had a change. All right, let's jump into the fourth game, which is Ghost Lake. I have about 35 minutes until I have to be done with this, hopefully. So I'm gonna fast forward a bit. And um, Toby, you know the length of the games. Do I have to fast forward a lot if I want to finish this in 35 minutes? Or do you think I can sort of go with the pace I've used so far? Another option would be to do this game and then finish the last game later. But obviously I would prefer you don't remember? Okay. We'd prefer to finish this before so we don't have the long break. So it is uh, Khmer against Britons. Uh, Khmer obviously a great save on pretty much every map. While Britons is very specifically good on this map because there are so many extra sheep on this map. If we look around a bit. There's two extra sheep in the ice there. Delta grabbing two sheep already. Delta is the Khmer player. So for him it's more about taking the sheep away from, uh, from Toby as well. Two sheep there as well. Actually less sheep than I remember there to be. Usually there were more. But Toby off to great start picking up a lot of sheep. And he has a real this is actually an insanely good map. If he if Delta walls there, Delta walls there, then he just has the front to worry about. And he's a wall there as well. Now his main goal is a bit awkward, but both extra goals, stones, super safe. Amazing gate. Eight. I read gate in chat. Amazing um map for Delta here. Oh, look at Toby's map. <laughs> Toby has exactly the same. This is wall for free. This is a super easy wall. And then you have stone and extra goals in the back. Now, the front is a little bit more open, but all in all, great maps for both players. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we're just gonna fast forward a bit here, trying to get into the next phase of the game. That's Toby just missing those sheep down there. Both of them just looking around for sheep. Britons usually you see some sort of drush into fast castle or men at arms into archers type of approach. Looks like a drush from Toby based on him taking the gold now, probably a barracks now. But then again, Toby has playing, been playing super aggressive the other games and now he's doing a drush before mill as well. So uh, looks like a fast castle follow up then, given he probably knows how good his map is as well. While Delta looks to be doing a scout build at the very moment. Already walling up again as well, so he will be safe against a potential Drush, most likely. 
and will be free and able to transition from there. Bring up the militia now is Mr. Toby going for the mill. I see a more and more tendency of people going for barracks before mill. Micro battle here with the scouts. Oh, both of them are micro nerding, but looks like Delta is getting out ahead there. Ooh, I'm not a big fan of this wall. I think Delta would have been way better off just walling this. Would have been way shorter and also further out. He's re actually really good recognition here from Delta to realize that he could actually just wall this area. So he didn't have to wall there. So that was a great move by Delta. Again, he's super safe now. He might even just go for a fast castle here, honestly. It's on gold now. Still queuing up villagers. While the Drush is coming in from Toby. And the Drush looks like it's going to be hitting walls the whole game. Which is a better for late game, Imp, Khmer or Britons? I think Khmer should be better, better in post-imperial age. Siege Ram, Skirms, Halps, Hussar. That's all you kind of need. A lot of sheep as well for Delta, so he doesn't really have to farm either. Toby, uh, Mr. Aggressive over here, goes up to Fuel Age, realizes what's happening. Mixes in four villagers going forward. Taking stone, so Toby wants to make a game out of it. This has been Toby's approach every single game so far. Where Toby has been going for aggression, aggression, aggression. And this game is not, no different. He will do the man arms upgrade, he will send four wheels forward, start towering up. The issue though again is that the map is just so good for Delta, this forward is very unlikely to achieve and accomplish too much, but as you can see, great positioning of the tower from Toby, it's out of reach, so Delta won't know that it's, co it's coming unless he uses some building scouting here. For those who don't know, you can, if you're red now, I could take a villager, I could make a house and just scan around. And if it shows up as red, it means there is something there. In which case I know that, know that there is something coming. So there is the tower up. Delta has a way better fuel age time now compared to the last time though. In the Arabia game he got caught up off guard and ended up at a really slow uh, fuel age time. So he had no way to answer the forward. In this game however he does have an answer. Toby doing a second tower in archery range as well. So pressure from Toby is gonna be non-stop as usual. Range from Delta. Delta is slowly creeping towards castle edge though so if he can buy time here which he's doing the tower is up he's nice wall still double palisade wall on the bottom delta is looking like he might just click the castle edge soon and i don't see how toby can stop that so question then is will delta do crossbow will he go elephants he's idling his town center now what he was idling his town he could cancel those wheels and go to castle edge that's a little bit of a, of a blooper, blooper from uh, Mr. Delta here. He could have been up to castage already. But, you know, that's the thing that happens when you're being pressured, right? If you are under the, this type of pressure, you often make mistakes and don't... Like, obviously, if you play with a calm mind and nothing happening, you usually can make and rec like recognize these things happening. But when you're under pressure, it's easy to suddenly forget and miss things like that. There's a tower war here. There is a villager repairing, though. Toby's not focusing the villager at the moment. Tower is sort of, again, not shooting on the villagers. They're just shooting the towers. Pressure from the top side as well now. This tower kind of just to take away the stone from Delta. But I don't think Delta minds as he has the stone there. Like this should be in range. These villagers should be in range. Maybe I'm wrong. He doesn't have fleshing, so maybe that's why. Toby doesn't have fetching either. Let's see Toby's economy. Far, far away from uh, Castle Edge. But he just finished fetching, so he should now be in range of the villagers. Indeed he is. So Toby can no, uh, Delta can no longer repair the tower. Nor can Toby, because Delta has uh, fetching as well. Delta with four villagers in the queue after. He could cancel those and get Bodkin arrow. Sending the archer. He has five archers in the tower, which is a good move, because that means he doesn't have the idle village time. He's sending one archer down here to deal with the men at arms. Seed workshop immediately. That was Delta. Ooh, as Toby is starting to stonewall him in. What? Okay, <laughs> this just looks super weird when you're a red point of view. There's one random stonewall. Uh, I would have honestly liked to see red do crossbows and then run across the map. Just delete this and run across the map with five crossbows. Look at Toby's base. Super exposed. Crossbows would have forced a lot of idle time and so on. 
And this is really cute though by Toby is stonewalling in the top section of Delta for Delta. So Delta can only fight from these angles. He's getting a free picks on the scouts and the militia there. As Toby, how far is he from Castlage? Still a couple hundred food. He's using the market now to balance his equal a little bit. Only missing 200 food now after some magic with the market. Delta did win the tower war, but besides that he doesn't really have too much to show for as Toby has six villagers ahead right now. Moving out with Archers now, but he's in the tower range. This is a big misplay from Delta in my opinion. He didn't have to go out there. Toby can just, yeah, send them out. Nice micro there. Sending into the tower the low HP Archer. Again, great, great micro by Toby actually. Really well done. That's sick actually. Really nice. Didn't lose a single Archer. What a micro nerd you are, Toby. What a micro nerd. So yeah, no town center happening for Delta right now. Do Manganus instead. He wants to clean up the pressure before switching into the boom. Scorpion as well. So even though Delta has been in Castledge now for a while, Toby is now on the way to Castledge. He doesn't have too much to show for, right? He did kind of waste his five archers. He is walled in there, and he hasn't added any extra town centers. He's getting closer to a castle drop, honestly, but no sign of extra TCs yet. So with that in mind, what had, has, does Delta really have to show for in this game? Hitting castle so soon, right? So now he, now he has crossbows. This is the, a little bit strange to me, right? He sent those archers out when they were feudal age archers, pretty much, instead of waiting for crossbow and botkin, which he has now. So now his numbers are way fewer, while Toby is now adding a seed workshop. TC coming up from Delta now as well, which might not be in range of the tower, honestly. Toby doing crossbow, botkin arrow is also mixing in some knights from his own base. No town centers from Toby, so both players are. Well, Toby is playing really aggressive and really unit heavy as always. Oh, really nice positioning there. It's probably gonna get one vill, maybe two. He got one villager there for free. And yeah, this tower is not in reach of the tower, so the tower will remain. With some mangonels here, Toby can definitely do a lot of pressure. Mangonels and eight range crossbows. But this is the whole army of, uh, of Delta here. So this feels super vulnerable. Toby deleted, opened the wall here and wanted to run, with, run in with the men at arms. Men at arms is still alive, by the way, from Feudal Age. Well, I jinxed that. There's only one guy left now. This is sort of the game as well, where if Delta suddenly cleans up Toby's aggression, it ends really fast. But if Toby manages to keep Delta... Um, what's it called? When he's stuck in his base. I'm looking for the English word here. Something with tamed. Contained. If he manages to contain Delta in his base here, I think the transition for for Toby into Imperial Age is going to be so much better. Oh, there's a castle. It does have the picture of our lord. Is there a reason why the it has the picture of our lord is the question now. Occupied. Compartmentalized. <laughs> contained, guys. I was looking for contained. Not a single one of you said contained. Great micro by Toby so far. Picking up two, three crossbows. Another one. Three he took a villager there. He's also gonna go for the scorpion now. Doing some splits. Ooh, fancy micro nerding. All the crossbows are gone, and suddenly, this castle has this picture for a reason. So four villager, five villager leave for Delta still. Town center coming up now from Toby going for the three TC. Mangano is coming in though. There's a tower as well, so this. Castle should go up, even though he has it has a picture of, of our lord. As Toby realizes that as well and falls back. Great pressure though from the top two mangoes hitting the town center. So this town center is actually very expensive to repair. So this uh, pressure again, really really good from Toby. Even though Delta has the village lead now, he doesn't feel ahead because he doesn't have a smooth development. He's constantly reacting. He's just trying to regain control in his base, right? He did get one mangonel for free there, so that's a good good on him. Might even get a second one. Ooh. Nice micro by Toby there, so one for one so far. Ram coming in as well. This man at arms gets if this man at arms does he is he really gonna kill the mangonel? 
But if he gets to me, what a hero. Uh, should be picked off here. Good reaction by Delta. But this town center looks very, very likely to go down. Ooh, Delta did get the Mangonel there. So Delta is sort of stabilizing a little bit. He does have a castle that doesn't really contribute too much. But he's only on two TCs. Being Komodo, that's always... Uh, you can always boom nicely with 2TC. He's going for a stable and plus two. Two stables even. While Mr. Toby is about to go Imperial Age, if I saw correctly, indeed. Doing a uh, blacksmith because he realizes he will lose that one. Great recognition there. And he's up to cast Imperial Age. So with that in mind as well, he's just going to have so much control over this game. Unless Toby does break out with a lot of plus two knights. In which case, uh, if Delta breaks out, in which case Toby might lose the forward presence he has and suddenly has to start like from scratch over here the good thing now is being on the way to imperial age if he maintains the control of the forward area then delta is just going to be again under non-stop pressure as he took a little bit of a mango hit there three rams is toby Ooh, this is actually one of those p potential hard counters delta is going for plus two knights while Toby is trying to make a push with three ramps and crossbows. I'm not sure if this is intended to go to Imperial Age and have cat ramps, but if he tries to push in Castle Age here, that could be really, really painful, as Delta picks off these crossbows. He did lose the Mangonel though there. And here comes the Knights with plus two, seven Knights with plus two in for the counterattack. Good reaction so far by Toby, doing a Castle as well. Trying to quick wall, but unfortunately not able to do so. Looks like there is Ballistics as well, so these Knights will not trade too well. But this again, this is Disturbance, right? You don't want this to happen as soon as you hit Imperial Age. You want to have a smoother transition. There's a misclick here, for sure. About 10 villagers idle right there. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's actually quite a disaster. Getting some more villager kills. Toby is suddenly 10 villagers behind. Good walls here, getting the Town Center up. But he should be able to clean this up. But again, if... If this didn't happen, Toby's transition would have been so smooth. I'm sure Toby would have preferred to have a forward castle as well, but obviously just one villager forward. Here comes the rams though, it's still battering rams. So, but they are now backed up by 10 range arbalests, which obviously is quite a difference. We do have um, a 14 villager lead for Delta right now. Delta is on the way to Imperial Age as well ton of Khmer farms, as we are used to seeing them these days. And he has five stables, making light cow right now. I actually... I'm not sure which position I like the most at the moment. More knights to raider, but there's a castle now, so this raid is probably not going to do much anymore. I think if Delta was making elephants or knights here, I would have liked it better, because the light cow just will fall too flat to the Arbalest until they are in Imperial Age. One TC down now for Delta, so the pressure is definitely on. Every single knight and every single light cab that Toby picks off now for free is a massive win for him. Because Delta wants to get to Imp, he wants to get the last armor upgrade, and then he wants to engage. There are suddenly some elephants in the mix. They are quite tanky, but still, it's Castle Age elephants against Imperial Age technology. So even the Castle Age elephants won't do too well. It does sort of buy enough time though, but the, the reinforcements are in and Toby will clean all this up. Delta is about to hit Imperial Age though, he's still trying to do some counterattacks. He has some knights in on the woodland, woodland here, so I like the activity here of being active with these units. I'm going for the counterattacks. There's only one ram left for Toby now, but Toby is still going to idle so much economy here. The last armor upgrade is on the way. Toby is at the same time preparing a switch to pikemen with four barracks still. Man, Toby is such an aggressive player. Everything forward. Who cares about your own base? Let's go forward. Eco at home is quite messy though, which makes sense considering the raids he's under. So, really good moves by Delta to actually go for the counterattacks. While uh, the thing Toby needs to do really is just keep applying pressure on the stables, keep idling economy as he starts mixing in pikemen. Because unless there are, if there are pikemen in the mix, then Toby is uh, Delta is going to have a really hard time cleaning up this army. Last armor upgrade is in now, so there's six pierced armor on these elephants. They're gonna be even more hard to hard to kill. As Toby's hit and running here, but he's kind of mis-micring a little bit. But yeah, look how tanky they are now all of a sudden compared to before. 
Light cap as well suddenly needs th three volleys with 14 Arbalest to kill a light cap, so that should buy Delta a lot of time. I think Delta needs to mix in uh, skirms as well. If he sticks with just these, this military where it trickles in one elephant, one light cap at a, at a time, then the Arbalest from Toby should be able to clean it up. But yeah, look how much more tanker they are now as soon as they got that last armor upgrade. But then our pikemen with zero upgrades. Chemistry on the way as well, so the Arbalest will be slightly better. Pikemen will help a lot, though. They have a lot of extra damage output, and they will be serve as a tank shield. Toby does have a 15 population lead, and his eco is finally clear of any enemies. So, but yeah, you look at the eight farmers at the moment. So Toby needs to figure out the economy. He has five town centers, even a sixth, but the eco still looks quite, quite messy. But it makes sense considering all the pressure that is being put on. Listen, remember as well, this is if Toby loses this game, no, if Toby wins this game, it is over. So if Delta manages to win this game, Delta, like Delta is under so much pressure right now, because if he wins this game, he still has a fighting chance. But if he loses, he's dead and out, right? So there's a lot of pressure on him uh, under these circumstances. Uh, Pookie AOC, thanks a lot for the 49 months, by the way. Four years, holy cow. Zellares, thank you for the six months. Shiggity, thanks for the two months. Nice casting, thank you. El Cerdo, thanks for the prime. Dark Finner with the prime as well in the seven months. Usurpator, thank you for the 25 months as well. Are you hyped for Black Forest? Pog, I'm not. I'm super hyped. I hope we can. I hope I can do some proper trolling. Wait, Microbot will be here, picking up the light cab without too much concern. Delta is now making the skirmisher switch. So he's doing the right moves. Again, Toby making the like, enemies, like, he's just building every single military building in the face. It's like uh, asserting his dominance, right? Still looking really, really good for him, but if, but Toby, uh, Delta is obviously making the counter units. So if Delta can get these units running and rolling, then uh, that's the thing as well. If Delta actually gets control back in this game and he manages to hold this area and start pushing back, uh, Toby will lose all his production buildings and they're all forward and then to Toby will be like oh man oh man we we know what this means right then Toby will lose all his production buildings ah and Delta notices this is 21 villagers 20 villagers did someone summon the Lord or is it just me now Delta has the army as well Delta has the, the counter units to actually deal with this. So this is very, very likely to be a full-on doubt cast, if you ask me. If this came three minutes earlier, I think it would have worked, but now, deleting the university to place the castle in his face. <sighs> Ooh, great mangano shot there. The skirms, nice micro from Delta as well. As he decides to only build the castle with one villager while the others are cheering. Okay. There we have the castle coming up. Another great Mangling Shot. Skirms are trading off very poorly for Delta here. Both of them are struggling around the 100 population. So it's a very scrappy game for both players. And those are the fun games to play as well. Toby's base is looking really nice though. Six town centers, a castle in the mix. Starting to make some pikemen and longbows from this area as well. But I feel like Delta is like... Delta has more military now. And he does have more counter units and better technology. Toby still has only plus one armor on the Spearman, right? So the Skirms will just melt them. I'm starting to get a sense, a little tingly feeling that Delta might be able to do this. It's Treb now, again the counter units, sending out the light cap to raid. It's like in a little bit of a stalemate area right now where none of them are able to accomplish too much. Trebuchet from Toba, but there are two trebs for Mr. Delta here. I wonder if Warwolf might be on the menu. Sieging up the treb, so probably treb against treb war here. Third treb from Delta. This castle might have been way too uh, optimistic for Toby as the castle is going down. It's trying to repair now, but a little bit, a little bit too late there. Now there are three trebs against one. It's starting to look like Toby is crawling his way. Uh, Delta is crawling his way back as we have a seventh town center for Toby. Toby, stop watching Doubt stream and learn how to play this game. Uh, why is Delta's rating so much higher? I think when they played this, Delta was about 100, 
Cover soul points higher than Tommy. A bunch of stables now on the top. He does have over 40 farmers now, so food eco is starting to look very solid. So production should be pretty good there. He's doing the he has the plus two armor upgrade as well. Still a lot of lacking Imperial Age techs for Mr. Toby here. While we can see Delta has pretty much full upgrades except except uh, uh, chemistry on the skirms and full armor and just missing some attack upgrades on the cavalry. Also, obviously, Hussar. So I think Delta has done a better way prioritizing technology here. While Toby obviously has tried to force the pressure and tried to make it happen, Delta all of a sudden looking very, very good to take it back. Kumer Farms obviously helps a lot. He's been pressured a lot and just had farms everywhere, which obviously then if you're Kumer, it's uh, kind of the ideal situation. And this is what I talked about earlier now, right? So Delta is stabilizing, Delta is pushing back, and now he's cleaning up all the production buildings of Toby. So Toby will have to reset and have to remake everything from home. Also queuing up <laughs> villagers with his 70s boom now, which is obviously nice. His uh, villager count should hit the the number you want very, very fast. Eight town centers! Why not? Why not? So we have eight TCs now for Toby, hitting the required villager numbers. He has a 20 villager lead almost. Delta queuing up bills as well, so they're both now taking a breath. Things are cooling down a little bit, so they're both fixing their economies, getting in the last technology upgrades, and so on. So very, very solid adaptation and play from both players here. Coming forward now with Arbla still missing the last armor upgrade on those, coming in right now. You also have no Yeoman yet to speak of. Full armor now on the light cap as well, as the raiding starts happening for Delta. You never want to be in a post-imperial situation against Khmer, where they can just start spamming those food units for free. Capture them on the way, battling ram on the way. We all know Britain's weakness is siege ram, and it looks to me like that is what Delta is heading towards. Let's have a look at the economy of Toby, looking very solid on wood and gold. Maybe this is the time for Yeoman, when you have this much resource in your bank. Uh, doing the remaining upgrades now for the infantry. Obviously, they have been lacking for quite a while now. Doing a nice little cheeky patrol here to make sure the scrums are missing. Nice little cheeky move there. But yeah, the, the lack of upgrades on the pikemen has been quite uh, convincing as well. Look at those splits. Such a micro nerd. Um, Hustler now from Delta as well. Another pain in the butt to deal with for to Toby. I think if there's something I would mention here for Toby that he should have done earlier to probably prioritize the upgrades on the pikes if he had more pikes earlier with better upgrades in the area here when he was pushing earlier I don't think Delta would have had a chance to come back and regain control now stables coming up from Delta as well it's gonna start raiding everywhere starting to enter that post Imperial Khmer madness where you get siege ram skirms hussar and just so much mobility so good, such a good economy that it just becomes a pain to deal with, really. Can you explain what is better about Hustard and Lightcap? Oh, you have more HP, right? And I think you might move slightly faster? No, I actually don't know the exact details, but you have more HP. More attack speed, they attack faster. So 15 more HP and attack faster. Last upgrades now for the Halbs, as Delta is pushing in straight through the middle, right on top of the production buildings of Toby. Delta with a very healthy 180 population, while Toby is struggling with 140. Halberdiers, Arbless coming out. And yeah, you can just look at the minimap right now. There's red everywhere, raiding in the back, idling villagers left and right. At the same time pushing through the middle with three trebuchets taken out of the production, even mixing in his own Arbless now. That's at a point where you know that you're in a very comfortable position and as we look at Toby's resources, gold is non-existent anymore, zero gold income, and he's struggling to get units out on the field. While if you look at uh, Delta's economy, very healthy and the production queue is out of this world. So I think we can fast forward a bit here because it looks to me like Delta is about to wrap, wrap this game up with the pressure from every angle. Toby had a really good try. It was a lot of great aggression, but Delta was able to defend it in the end and managed to bring it to the fifth game here. Brings us to a 2-2. Um, again, 
I think if just a little bit more prioritization on the helps for Toby, and Toby would have probably won this game in the early phases here. At the same time, you could also make an argument for Delta to maybe prioritize skirmishes earlier, because that would have helped him a lot to defend as well. But either way, great defense from Delta, great pressure from Toby, just a really evenly matched game. And those are kind of fun games to watch because you can also um, there's you can also see those small things where a small change in the prioritization, maybe a, a different upgrade, maybe um, get ballistics instead of a town center, things like that could have changed up, uh, like the outcome of certain games. Would you call this a throw or a nice comeback? Felt like Toby had it. I wouldn't call it nor a throw or a combat a comeback. I would call it a very even game where Delta managed to uh, be victorious. I don't think it was a comeback or a throw. Hi, right, the Viper has Discord. Uh, Zabhern underneath the stream. You can find the link to my Discord or exclamation mark Discord in the chat. Civ win. It's not a Civ win. Britons definitely have a good fighting chance against Khmer, but Khmer are just very, 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 very solid. So, uh, we have, in theory, we have six minutes to finish the last game. I'm going to try to jump into it, and hopefully the A Olympics can maybe wait a little bit, or maybe they have a different player for the first game. This is uh, Acropolis. We have Khmer now for Toby, while we have... <coughs> Apologies. Uh, and we have Indians for Mr. Delta. So I'll probably have to fast forward this a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward. We have to be a little bit more active here and cast this in a little bit faster pace. Toby Lurin Deer, he's playing us there. This will be like a rap god just in casting, okay? Whoa! Let's slow down a little bit here. Toby has a very close wood line on the bottom low ground, so that is very convenient. While Delta is going for the wood line on the top. This is sort of more of a luck in the map generation. If if Delta had a woodline there, I'm sure he would have taken it as well. So very convenient for Toby to have such a close woodline. Luring uh, Ibex from the low ground. What a nerd. That's all I can say. And he's doing it in the doubt way as well. Uh, Mr. Wilre, Wilre, Wilre. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, dude. But thank you so much for gifting five subs to the channel. Thank you, thank you very much for that. So, a uh, walling up here from Delta. Obviously, Delta's playing against the Indians. Indians? Mm, it's not a great 1v1 one -one save uh, compared to other top picks, like Khmer, for instance. And this way of chopping tree is not ideal either. He did fix it, though, so good on him. Indians obviously have cheaper villagers. Looks like a scout opening here. Looks like a scout opening. No, actually, gold. Man, are we surprised? Mr. Toby. Okay, I thought he was actually going forward. Just doing a second, uh, second lumber camp and a range. With Khmer, obviously, you can skip the barracks because you you're not limited by buildings. Uh, Delta actually going for the full wall on the plateau, which is interesting to see. It's going to be safe, but the woodlands naturally aren't as big and convenient as they would be on the low ground. Spearmen going forward to scout. Let's see what they see here. Looks like Delta won the scout war, indeed. So, uh, yeah, three scouts coming forward from Delta. Toby has three archers. He's doing a blacksmith as well. In this case, you might want to even make a barracks as Khmer. Because you know you're going to be up against scouts. And getting some spearmen out is always helpful. These archers as well, usually when there are lumberjacks, lumber camps on the low ground, archers can be a very good opening here. But with Delta having everything inside his base, I'm not so sure if these archers will do too much. These scouts aren't finding too much damage either though, to be fair. Five scouts now on the field, and the gold is like within range of the town center. So if he wants to jump here, it will be under the town center. As he's going in, Toby should just garrison here. He should have let those scouts commit, because he would he would have lost so many scouts there. He really went for it. Four archers now. There's an archery range coming up from Delta, so he wants to react with some skirmishers by the looks of it. Running in under the town center. Still no units killed or lost here on this game, uh, except the starting scout of Toby. We have six archers, seven soon. And it's just a one range build at the moment from Toby. Very interesting approach. Released the archers now, picked up one spearman and is now moving forward. Skirms, blacksmith, probably fletching on the way. Indeed. As Toby looks for damage, but... 
at the moment i can't really see where he should here where he would be able to find that damage what i do like though is looking at his economy as he's looking closer and closer to hitting cast Sledge. he's doing a market now probably going to buy 100 food and it's going to be on his way up and if we look at delta's economy 100 food in the bank doing wheelbarrow far far from cast Sledge. i think toby in this situation when he realizes that this is just fully walled he should not reveal these archers he should run them back hide and wait for cast Sledge. perfect Perfect decision making by Toby here. Understands what's going on. He understands he cannot do anything with these as few dash archers. So he does fall back and he's gonna wait now for cast Sledge and do crossbows. And that is the perfect, perfect decision in this very moment. Look at that Khmer food. It's always lovely to watch. So Delta's reaction to this, not finding seeing those archers anywhere, is to go for aggression himself. Makes sense. Toby could hide in houses there. So he should not lose any villagers here, but still it will be a lot of idle time. And um, obviously that is a little bit of an annoyance. Maybe Toby has forgotten that he can hide in houses. Nope, he has not. Definitely not. So good moves by Toby here. Uh, it's five idle villagers, but if he gets one stable up and builds one elephant, he will clean up everything here. As Delta decides to dive under the town center again for some weird reason. Losing one scout, taking a lot of damage. This move is very, very strange to me. Toby could even jump out and fight the Skirms here. Skirms don't trade well against the uh, villagers. Toby still missing a lot of resources to go to Castlage. Uh, I mean Delta as Toby hits Castlage. And Toby immediately doing crossbow, doing botkin arrow, and the archers going for the aggression. I really, really like Toby's uh, position right now. But there is, of course, the chance that his army gets completely cleaned up. Town center. Okay. Lost one villager there. He has crossbows now, so he should be able to defend. Still feel like Toby shouldn't have lost any villagers there. He could have also just jumped out with villagers and fought these skirms. Especially now as Delta loses all the scouts to the town center. This is suddenly looking fantastic for Toby. Five skirms around in the base still. I honestly, if I was Toby, I would I wouldn't chase with these crossbows. I'd have just gone forward. Tried to put the pressure, maybe do a stable a little bit earlier. He will clean it up now, so it's or it's obviously nice, but still. That could have been, those could have been eight crossbows that are forward and putting on the pressure. Delta still in feudal age, obviously feeling the pressure here. The wood lines are getting worse and worse. Look at these wood lines. And that's the kind of the price you pay for not going uh, out on the map. Because the wood lines are on the low ground. That's where the best wood is. And Toby has two lumberjack camps already down. And he has a town center. Slightly better map generation for him, to be fair. But still, I think Delta should have probably move to the low ground first because he's running a marathon right now to drop off these resources. Uh, Toby did break through the initial first palisade wall but Delta does have enough units now. If he goes for elite skirm he should be able to defend. He's doing Balkan arrow and elite skirm as he's moving out to do a town center on the bottom right. Did Toby see this or what? Because he's moving in a very convenient... Toby stream hacker confer Hacker confirmed? Hacker confirmed or what? Toby, man. Ay, 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 what a disaster for Delta. This is such a disaster. There's gonna be five dead vills just like that. Hacker! Four dead vills for sure. Four dead vills for sure. Okay, three dead vills. And still, micro on the hill. Toby only has, uh, Delta only has plus one armor, so Toby could, in theory, micro with the hiller against these crossbows as well, which he is doing. So. Very solid indeed. Two villagers going back there. So if you look at the village, it's a, it's a 15 villager difference. This is looking so, so good for Del uh, Toby now. Also making a second town center on the plateau when you already have used up half of the resources there. Really well played by Toby here so far. And feels like Delta... Again, Delta feels like a very standard player to me. He's like, he's going for the meta, he's doing the normal things, and Toby seems like a more clever player in terms of using Civ, using the Civ strengths, using the maps in the different ways. So I think it's a clear evidence. I think Delta might be a better mechanical player, as you can see as well with the previous game where he was able to come back with just producing um, cavalry, producing skirms, while Toby seems to be more of a... You could maybe call Toby more of a Tato player, the Max type of player, while Delta might be more of a Hera type of player. What are you saying? Uh, you're hacking to the future. Awesome.
Scoffer, thank you very much for gifting a sub to Steve G. <clears throat> the village account is actually getting smaller. Uh, only 12 at this point, as Delta is doing plus 2, is doing camels as well. There is a thousand score difference though. And camels coming in now. Scrums are still there, obviously. Not a mango from Toby. Micro a little bit here. Did get a decent shot up there. Is micro well against the camels as well. Bring this mango into the fight, and he should have a really good situation again here. Behind this. Toby is on the way to Imperial Age, while Delta is looking not too far off, honestly, but still he's housed at the moment, and the timing here being in Imperial Age for Toby is going to be massive. Not able to get anything done with the counter damage either. As Toby goes for the forward town center, next level strats here, where he's taking the wood, the closest wood from Delta. As Delta again, be like. This type of wood chopping is just not ideal, right? So I think the biggest tech Delta should learn from this game is probably to try and secure location outside of the plateau earlier. That's the biggest take uh, Delta can probably take from this game. So Tobey is now hitting Imperial Age, Arbalest immediately, Bracer, preparing ramps as well. And the pressure from Del for Delta is going to be so hard. I think Delta has made a big mistake here. If you look at Delta, he had two villages queued up here and Imperial Age. He has two TCs that are not doing anything, yet he queued up Imperial Age behind two villagers. Which obviously is quite unfortunate. It's just bad luck, uh, maybe under the pressure you make these types of mistakes. It does happen, obviously. Um, but yeah, here the Arbless are in. Uh, it's just, there is no army for, for Delta to deal with this. Capdram even. So buildings will melt. That villages are falling like flies, there's a 30 village difference all of a sudden. And Delta is calling the GG, saying well done to Toby. And I think we have to say that as well. Toby, well done. I really like the way you played this, this map in particular. Just uh, safe walling up, especially the decision here to not show those archers when you saw that he was walled. It was a really good decision. And uh, after that, just played it safe, took the advantages where you could and played. Overall, just very, very smart. And I can appreciate smart plays. And Delta again looked like a very meta player and I think you outsmarted him today and probably picked better civs and played better strategies. Um, Delta did seem like a real solid player though and I think if Delta adjusts a few more things, maybe gets a little bit more experience on certain maps, he can definitely improve a lot as well. So honk for Toby, where's my honker? I don't know where the honker is. Ah, the woman has put it too far away for me to get, go and get it. <clears throat> so yeah, well done Toby, aggressive play, you got rewarded with aggressive, smart play. And I think that's pretty much not too much more else to say there. Well done, good good set here actually, another series that went to 5 games. Happy to see those finals go to 5 games. That is obviously very satisfying for a spectator point.